excited. We have actually convinced an actual angel to come and tell us about the birth of Jesus. Now, shh, we do not want to scare the angel away. Yee-haw! <laughs> Look at all those turkeys. Uh, what y'all doing? Oh. We do not, we're, an angel's coming to tell us about the birth of Jesus. We don't want to scare him. <laughs> Honey, you don't know nothing about angels. Believe you me, you do not want one of them scary angels coming in here with all their shock and, and awe. Believe you me, your bladder be empty and your hair be white. <laughs> no, you are much better off hearing about angels in that first Christmas from me. I know all about it because I was there. So uh, why don't you sit your pretty little self right down over there, sweet gal, isn't she? And, and I'll commence to telling you all about that first Christmas, that blessed event, that supposedly silent night. All right, let's go back about nine months before the silent night. Now that's for you unscientific folks, what we say so says time travel, which takes us back to about hmm, March 25th, 4 B.C., which don't make too much sense to me, about 3.05 in the afternoon. And there was this sweet young thing named Mary. And she was bustling around her, her homestead, uh, minding her own business, uh, baking up some corn pone or some possum bitlins or some such. When all of a sudden, this bright and shining alien being, or angel, as Sums calls it, burst into her parlor and says, Howdy, Mary! <laughs> well, believe me, having a bright and shining alien being showing up so sudden-like was a big shock to Mary. So much so that she pretty near jumped out of her skin, which, when you think about it, would have been very messy. But, but that angel said, Don't be afeard. I come to bring you good news. Here it is. You're gonna have a baby. Now ain't that dandy? Well, that right there was a big, the rabbit died shock for Mary. And she blushed and got as pretty as a slab of salt pork, and, and, and she stammers out, <clears throat> uh, him, mm, bright and shining alien being, sir, your honor, your, your majesty, your immenseness. Um, I, they just, uh, I, 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 I don't mean to be disrespectful, but there is just one little eensy, teensy, weensy little problem. And that's this. I ain't married to no man, no how. 
<laughs> if it's kind of a necessitary for having a baby hereabouts or <laughs> hereabouts. But that, that extraterrestrial, he, he fires right back at her and says, Mary, I got one word for you. Are you ready? Here it is. God. You see, there ain't nothing that ain't not possible for God no how. I mean, <laughs> he can split the sea in halfsies. And he can make catfish and, and elephants and, and buzzards out of nothing. And, and he can raise folk from the dead. And I'm not talking about no crumbly, grumbly zombies. I mean, alive. And he can sure enough make a baby without using no husband. And, and the reason why he's doing it in this unique and special way is because this baby is going to be the uniquest and specialest baby of all time. Different than all them what's come before and different than all them what's going to come. This baby, this baby is going to be the only begotten Son of God, the King of the universe, the Lord of everybody, the Savior of the world, Jesus. Now, God has chose you special for this chore, Mary, so I need to have you hear you say it. Are you in or ain't you? Well, Mary, she kind of stood there and shuffled her feet a bit and scratched her head and kind of constipated herself for a little bit. And then she says, You know, I is the Lord's servant. So, okla dokla do. Yes, sir. Ah, uh, yes. <clears throat> well, weren't that special? <laughs> of course, uh, the easy part was agreeing to an unplanned bun in the oven. But the hard part, it turns out, now this is where the story gets a little bit like one of my mama's soaps. <laughs> turns out she had a suitor, a, 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 a fion, uh, she had a suitor named Little Joe or uh, Joseph. And, and, and uh, they had been sparking for a, moment, for a while and they were... They were planning on getting hit sometime in the future. But one thing fiance, fiance, uh, uh, boyfriends are not known for is being understanding about an unplanned pregnancy that they ain't had nothing to do with. So Mary was pretty scared next time she came and talked to little Joe. But <laughs> whew, she screwed up her courage. And she straightened her spine, and she ruffled out her feathers, and she took a deep breath, and she said, Little Joe Brighton, <laughs> Little Joe Brighton, Shannon, alien being came from God and told me I'm going to have a baby that's coming straight from God. It ain't my fault. I ain't done nothing wrong. Honest, I ain't. Well, Little Joe kind of looked puzzled for a bit and did a little bit of his head scratching. <gasps> Then he gets this look on his face like a mule just kicked him betwixt the eyes. And he says, <clears throat> Now hold on here, whoa. You're telling me that a bright and shining alien being came from God and told you that you're going to have a baby that's coming straight from God. It it weren't your fault. You ain't done nothing wrong. You, uh, and, and you're you honest Abe. I don't know what Abraham has to do with anything. But has I got that right? I mean, I, I love you. You make the best marmalade in the county. <laughs> and, and you're as cute as a, as a bug's ear. But, Mary, how stupid do you think I am? What kind of country bumpkin hillbilly do you think I is? I mean, I know all about biology and animal husbandry, and that ain't the way it works. No, only thing I got to say to you is I do not believe a word coming out of your mouth. Uh, I think you are a few spins short of a dreidel. 
And as a matter of fact, I, I don't even want to, to think about what actually, factually happened. But Mary, this, uh, this, this cuts me up deep inside. And as far as you and me, I, I, I'm sorry, but, but we're done. Now, you got to give me back my granny's ring. And he took his ring back from her, right out of her nose, and then he tromped off like he weren't never coming back again. He was heartbroken. Well, she was very heartbroken. She has what is known in medicinal terms as an achy, breaky heart. It was a sad, sad soap opera ending to Joseph and Mary Sparkin. <laughs> But the good Lord know just what was going on. And the good Lord know just what to do. And the good Lord sent Joseph his own little plot twist. That very night, a bright and shining alien being of his very own came to him, rousted him out of bed at an ungodly hour like before noon and, and makes him stand there beside his bed in his stripy pajamas and his fuzzy bunny slippers and says, Listen up, Geppetto. <laughs> Angel called him Geppetto because he was a carpenter. <laughs> and Angel's always making jokes. Listen up. You know your gal Mary. She ain't never lied to you before. And you better believe, sure as shooting, she ain't lying to you now. She's pure as the driven snow. And the baby that is forming in her ain't some earthly whippersnapper brought about by some scandalous hokey pokey hanky panky. Shame on you for thinking so. No, that baby really is the only begotten Son of God, the King of the universe, the Lord of everyone, the Savior of the world, Jesus. Now, are you going to believe me? And are you going to believe her? And are you going to do right by her? And are you going to make an honest woman of her? Or am I going to turn you into a hound dog. <laughs> well, little Joe, he didn't need no more convincing. I mean, a blight and shining alien being showing up in your boudoir threatened to turn you into nothing but a hound dog and at the same time vouching for your fiancé's chassis. It's purity. That's enough to convince most anyone. <laughs> so, next morning, Joseph, he jumps out of bed and he runs on down to the city hall and he gets him one of them there uh, marriage licensures. Then he gathers up a whole bunch of flowers, which a man always needs when apologizing to his woman. And, and then he gets him a, a Jewish preacher man and he heads on over to Mary's house. He gets down on his knees and he begs for her to forgive him for being such a wooden head, and begs for her to marry him right then and right there. Well, she said yes, and they did, and it was just beautiful. Well, now fast forward about nine months, which is about how long it takes one of them, their babies, to grow in his mama's belly you know don't you about the facts of life well the facts of life are governments love taxes <laughs> they all got their revenue men and the romans back in them days they weren't no different they loved their taxes pretty near to death of course this was in olden times so them roman folk they had not been so sophisticated as us. They never had no heard tell of any income tax or, or, or property tax or Washington sales tax. No, all they had in them dark and primitive times was the 
Give us your money tax. Every once in a while, one of them Roman seizures would get into his head, E pluribus mula, which is Roman talk for out of many money. And they'd, they'd say, make this decree that everyone had to go back to their ancestral hometown and pay up. So Joseph and Mary, they didn't want to pay. Same as you, same as I. But you can't fight City Hall, especially when City Hall is chock full of Roman soldiers with pig stickers and frog giggers. So without further ado, Joseph went off to the garage and topped off his Harley, which is what he called his donkey. And they put all kinds of blankies on that donkey and then one very preggy Mary, or as Joseph liked to call her, his round yawn virgin. <laughs> and off they went down them country roads to Bethlehem. Country roads, take me home to the place where I must pay southern Israel, Bethlehem, country roads, take me home. <laughs> well, they pulled up in front of the Blessed Nativity Motel and Restaurant, and they were cold, and they were weary, and they were tired, and they were, truth be told, a little more cranky than a holy family ought to be, if you know what I mean. When they came into the lobby, there was a sign there that said, No vacancy, which is a French word that means there's no room for them in the inn. So it's more like an out. <laughs> well, Mary, she commenced to weeping and a gnashing and a, and a wailing. And, 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 and my, she was impressive. Her caterwauling went on and on. I mean, they say it was a silent night, but mm -mm, that girl could go. And she wept and cried for so loud and so long that the night manager finally said, Okay, okay, stop. I'll give you a room. Just stop crying and don't burst in my lobby. <laughs> he gave him a room. It was actually more of a critter garage, but it was better than nothing. So that's where the Holy Family hold up that first night and that also is the very night that baby Jesus was born not in a nice clean hospital obstructed ward nope born in a barn and his mama went and lay him down in a jury rigged crib which was a cow's feeding trough <laughs> now all this I've been talking about happen without me being there directly but here's where I come in because I was a rancher riding the range in them parts in those days no I wasn't one of them highfalutin high and mighty celebrity sheep shepherds with all their all their Christmas carols and their long flowing purified robes and 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 all their uh prominent placement in the nativity scene no i was more of a down to earth dirt under my fingernails blue collar turkey rancher yes sir and i was sitting on maybe a thousand head outside of bethlehem they were a thousand head of prime <laughs> cage free organically grown hormone free turkeys in the next field over was all them snooty shepherds with their sheeps, or as I like to call them, field maggots. They and me were settling in for a long winter's nap. Their sheep were bawling softly. And my, my, my turkeys were gobbling softly. It was a calm, clear, silent night. When all of a sudden, there was this bright flash, and this scary thing appeared over in the next field. <laughs> it was, as you may have guessed, another one of those bright and shining alien beings. And, and I could hear it hollering at the shepherds clear over here. And it was saying, fear not, which is 
something easy for a scary thing like that to say. I'll bring you good tidings. A baby has been born hereabouts. His name is Jesus. He's the, he's the only begotten Son of God. He's the King of the universe. He's the Lord of everything. He's the Savior of the world. He's Jesus. And his mama's gone and laid him down in a cow's trough. Now you go. Get. Get to know him. Well, when all that speechifying was going on over in that field, over in my field, I had my hands full trying to calm down my turkeys. That bright and blazing light had spooked them quite a bit. and I was gentling them down, whispering to them, me being a bona fide turkey whisperer. And I almost had them all settled down. When? Lucy in the sky with diamonds, there was this big bang like someone's corn squeezings just caught fire. And there was two gazillion of those bright and shining alien beings over there. And they were all screeching for all they're worth at the top of their lungs. Glory, glory, mega supercalifragilisticexpialidosis, glory to God in the highest. It was louder and scarier than if you took Led Zeppelin, Lawrence Welk, and Celine Dion and stuck them all together in a bagpipe and then squoozed them real hard. It was so terrified, tatingly loud, that when my herd heard it, they all clutched their prime, cage-free, organically grown, hormone-free hearts with their little wings, gave one final gobble, and keeled over stone cold dead all of them literally scared to death well i'm thinking who's gonna pay for all these deceasified turkeys i mean there they are all surrounded by bright and shining alien beings all screeching and a shouting and disturbing the peace and here i am surrounded by piles and piles of dead butter balls way before thanksgiving well, I think to myself, hmm, maybe I should hit up those bright and shining alien beings which did it all. Uh, but then I thought, as y'all might have mentioned, they're pretty scary looking beings. Might not take too kindly to being squeezed by me. Might strike me with lightning. Might turn me into a polecat. So then I figured, next best thing, I'll go after them shepherds. I mean, they had deep woolen pockets. And after all, it was their field in which the bright and shining alien beings were making all their ruckus, so they were clearly liable. So after the bright and shining alien beings flapped back off to heaven, I went over, hopped the fence to exchange insurance information. <laughs> but as soon as I hopped, they hightailed it out of there. So I gave chase like Smokey and the Bandit. <laughs> I chased them. I chased them through the suburbs of Bethlehem. And I chased them behind the Blessed Nativity Motel and Restaurant. And I chased them past the Blessed Nativity Motel and Restaurant dumpsters. And I chased them right into the critter garage where I figured I had them cornered. But when I barged into the barn, I stopped cold. But there, right in the middle, was a little baby, a sweet little baby, laying in a cow's feeding trough, a manger, just like the bright and shining alien being had said. And there were his, there was Mary and Joseph sitting beside him, holding hands and smiling sweetly with a strange glow around them. And there were those shepherds kneeling down in front of the manger. And then I, I saw that they weren't just looking at the baby. Here's something mighty strange. They were praying to the baby. Praying to the little baby. Isn't that a little weird? And they were worshiping the baby. Worshiping the little baby. Ain't that queer? Very strange, very strange. But as I listened to what they were saying... And as I remember what the angels had been saying, as I remember what all my Sabbath school teachers had been saying all those years, it came to me 
And I forgot all about my turkeys. They just weren't important anymore. And I, I forgot all about that because I understood and I believed. I, be, I understood what was going on here. And I believed who was going on here. This little baby born in a barn, laid in a manger. He sure as shooting was the only begotten son of God. And he truly was the king of the entire universe, that little baby. And he really was the Lord of everyone and everybody. And he really was the Savior of the world, come to take our sins away. He really was Jesus. And all them things I just said, he still is. So my suggestion to you this Christmas is that you forget all about your turkeys and your sheep and whatever your presence, your schedule, and you skedaddle over to Jesus and get to know him. Y'all take care now.